Hello and welcome to our podcast, The Global Smart Cities. Today, our guest is Dr. Sonel Duby, talk leader on smart cities. Hello, Dr. Sonel. Pleasure to be here, Sama. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure totally is mine. If we can simplify it for people who doesn't know exactly what smart cities is, uh, some people part a little bit from technology, how uh, you can describe it and uh, what do you think about the global smart cities in general? Thank you, Sama. That's, that's a very good question. How do you define smart cities? Yeah. Every city has got some need. Every citizen wants different things. While smart city is a response to make a lot of things efficient for the people, its underlying value is providing the best for everyone in the city. And that's the responsibility of the government around the world, that they understand the smart cities are not just about digitization and electronic infrastructure and AI, it's really about response to citizens' need. And where it really helps that we look at future infrastructure, that how well we can use the innovation, how we can harness the best power of AI to give people what they want. And in that regard, I think smart city is very responsive. It gives the real value of city to the people. It responds to citizens' need when they require the services or infrastructure from the city. One thing I do want to highlight in this regard, that cities like Riyadh are very fortunate to be in this point of time, have ability to use the best of what technology, innovation and infrastructure can offer. By definition, I look at cities like Riyadh, that their essence is about identity, culture, and environment. And what Smart City does for the vision of Riyadh, it really gives them a strategic competitive position to harness the power of AI to get the best of culture, identity, and really give citizens what they need for their peace and prosperity. So I think in that sense, Riyadh is definitely a leader and has a strategic opportunity to put it itself as a world leader in smart cities around culture, identity and people focus. In regards of this, uh, how, how will AI positively impact on these smart cities? AI is a wonderful thing. When we look at artificial intelligence, its best value is described that it's the first time after the invention of printing press, we are beginning to see how human decision making is transforming. Yeah. First time in the human history, we don't realize this, but the power of AI is first time in the human history where decisions are made by machines for humans. And its impact would be very long lasting but I think the smart cities allow people and the governments and institutions to look at both sides of AI, the ethical side and advantages of efficiencies, and put it at the core of their city's future. So to me, AI is a real advantage. It actually gives a real strategic advantage to the city. What took us 10 to 20 years in the past time, with the use of AI, we can really fast track that and reduce the time of implementation and decision making. And I see the evidence of that in your city all over the place. How do you view the importance of unifying global efforts and perspective to achieve a smart city vision? The global efforts are absolutely vital. We live in a global village now. Mm -hmm. It's unfair for any city or any region or any nation for that matter to think they can live and prosper in isolation. It's not going to stack up. It's not going to work for any place, any city, any region. So 
globalization in the sense of connected cities around the world is the reality of the day. Whether we talk of city of Riyadh and connecting to Rio in Brazil or connecting to any other city in Europe or Africa or Asia, this is how the cities are emerging to help each other, to collaborate, but also cities are working together to solve the problems of the people. So globalization or what we call the connected network of cities is the reality of the day. Good cities and cities who put people at the center of their decision making, they are harnessing this power. Because when you look at the mayors of the cities around the world, they have similar problems. The national leaders may have a different priorities, but the city leaders have a lot of unifying thing. They want to look after its citizens at the ground level. So that's a great opportunity. And I think the new era of cities, particularly in this region, is welcoming that. This conference is a great example of how Riyadh opened up for the global cities having a good interaction from city leaders around the world, but harnessing all that knowledge and information to make a substantial difference for the people of Riyadh and the region. So I think it's a great opportunity and it's a great time to really look at the new era of moving from nationhood to the cities. What's the important aspect uh, that we must consider to realize the future of cities? Predicting future is it's a difficult part, but uh, I'm an academic and a practitioner, so we also rely on looking at a lot of data, a lot of historical facts, but also looking at it, what do people want, how people's needs are transformed, how people are beginning to look at new behaviors, how the retail patterns are changing, people's buying habits are changing, how people are not inclined to sit in traffic for a very long time. So we look at all the patterns and behaviors and we predict that what the future may look like. One thing is becoming very clear, looking at all the evidence and data, the people are becoming very conscious of their environment. And this is particularly true and I compliment the youth of this world. The young people in this world are very protective of the environment. They are very aware and they have got a very good awareness about the planet, cities and infrastructure. So the future for me is to really look at it, how we can learn, how we can design new cities, the future cities, for, on the principle of less is more. Where we have to use less resources, where we have to use less infrastructure, where we have to use less investment to produce more. And I think in that regard, technology and AI are the real blessings. What really took us layers and layers of investments, number of physical infrastructure, now we can do without the aid of it and still provide the best services for the people. Your mobile phone is the best example. When we look at how connectivity is improved all around the world, Imagine if you have to still connect people by way of wires and old telephones, you would need so much of resources. So I think there's some really, really good evidence that the future and use of AI, innovation and digitization is really transforming the city. And now the big thing is how we look at people-focused cities, what Riyadh has put it in its future as humanizing cities. And that would be the real game changer for all around the world. Dr. Sarnel, thank you so much. Thank you, Sarma. Thank you for having me. And I just want to compliment the people of Riyadh and the region and the kingdom that you have got a very strong vision. And I think it's great to see the aspirations of the people and what you're going to do to make a difference to the cities in the region, particularly the Arab region cities. And it's, it's a very exciting time. So my best wishes and thank you for having us. Thank you for watching our episode with Dr. Sonal Dupi, talk leader on smart cities and see you in the next episode.